So in a recent postbag video, you could have seen me opening a package containing this USB tester and uh, I wanted to play around with it today. A few years back in 2017, I was in the UK, a place called Bury St. Edmunds and that's near Cambridge. And of course, when you're in the UK, you have to go to Poundland. And that's where I bought this power bank. And I plugged the USB tester in. It actually goes the other way around. And nothing happens. And I thought, well, that's maybe because there's no load. So I also have this adjustable load. And I plug that in and that then goes this way and still nothing. I press all the buttons I want, but nothing happens. And there's no button on this power bank. So I need to charge this, but I've seen other people on YouTube using this power bank and actually opening it up. And I've seen a I guess there's a 18650 cell in here and I've seen these batteries completely dead and that kind of makes me hesitant to just start charging it with one of these mini USB or micro USB cables because charging a completely empty 18650 cell can be a bit dangerous. I thought I would open this one up and see if there's some protection circuitry on there and what the battery voltage is. So I have this, I believe they call this a spudger. It says unlimited innovation and it's called the opening tool. Let's see if it lives up to its reputation and uh, start opening this up and see what's inside. Now, I'm hoping this is not totally glued in. Doesn't feel like it. There it goes. Now, although this is covered in some kind of plastic material, the edges on the end here are pretty sharp. So I don't want to apply too much force in case I Step myself. There's the lid. And there is a little PCB inside, some sticky tape, and the 18650 cell. Let's see if I can find a way to easily get this out. That was very easy, actually. So there's a chip on there, of course. Uh, actually holding it upside down. Let's do that again. It says SY3501. There's an inductor, some capacitors, some empty space there. And on the back, there's just the output and over there there's the input let's get a data sheet for this chip now that was a bit of a challenge uh, I couldn't find a data sheet for this chip at least not a data sheet I was able to read they were all in Chinese and it's maybe not a good idea to poke around with a metal object over there but I did find this circuit diagram which actually looks pretty much the same as what is on this board. There are some capacitors. Actually, there are a lot of capacitors. Um, I can't find the resistors that it mentions on the data sheet. There's one, but that says zero, zero, zero. So that's just a short. And there are two LEDs. So this is a charge IC 
and also a step up or boost converter to get five volts on the output and according to some other documents I found and ran through Google Translate this chip also has some protection on board but the only way to find out is to check at what voltage the battery is let me grab a multimeter now I'm just gonna measure across the battery positive and negative and I'm hoping to see way above zero volts actually I'd like to see above three volts 2017 I went to England went to Poundland bought this power bank I've used it once since then so it's been sitting there doing nothing for well about two years now um, I'm hoping to see something above three volts but that's not realistic I'm hoping to see not zero so I'm just gonna put my negative lead on the negative side of the battery and the positive on the positive and be careful not to short anything out and it says it's 1.27 volts that's very low that's Go down one range. Yeah, 1.28 volts. That's really low. Now the question, do I dare to start charging this battery? Do I trust this chip to do its work and not destroy anything? And the answer is of course, I don't trust the chip, but I do dare to plug this in. Um, one thing I am going to do is put this back in its case because I don't want to be shorting out anything while it's just lying around here on my bench. So let me do that. This should just click back in its place. Wait. Is this the wrong way around? Can't remember which way it came out. No, we'll just try it. Oh wait, of course it's the wrong way around. This thing doesn't fit over there. It needs to go over there. Between the leads, probably. And let's do this. Nothing. No light. Hmm. Maybe I have to leave this in for a while before it starts charging. Oh, wait. There's a I don't know if you can see that, let me just dim the lights quickly. There is a red LED flashing. That may mean it's charging. Actually, I could of course use this the other way around and see if there's any current flowing into the battery. So here we go. This is a USB lead that plugs straight into one of these wall adapters. I'm just going to plug in the USB tester and see what happens. A torch. And this is running. It says 5.02 volt. And if you press this button, you get a different screen it shows you the voltage it shows you the current let's get in a bit closer it shows you how many watts how many watt hours it tells you something about the temperature the time which is not running maybe that will start running when I plug in a load 
and the milliamp hours. So this is the power bank and this is the USB cable going into the power bank. And let's plug it in and see what happens. And the voltage drops down to about 4.5 volts. But that's maybe because there's some other things also plugged into that wall adapter. There's currently about 666 milliamps flowing into this battery. I don't know if you can see that, but it is charging, it's flashing. And well, this is just one way of testing out this USB tester. Of course, don't have to use this load. You can use this load as well. So if you press the button, you get a slightly different screen still shows you the watt hours, the milliamp hours, the wattage, and in green it shows you the current, and over there it shows you the voltage across the different lines of the USB cable, data plus and data minus, they're both at 2.48 volts. V negative, or ground, or whatever, zero volts and V plus that's at about 4.6 volts and if we press it again a bit less information but bigger so a bit easier to read 4.7 volts shows you again the current and what that means in power Another press turns it off. Well, as you can see, it's still charging. So it doesn't actually turn off the tester, it just turns off the information. And if you press it again, we're back to that screen again. I'm wondering how do I reset the time? Is it a double press? No. Is it a long press. Oh no, wait. That just flips the screen. Well, that's actually quite handy. But let's flip it back. I don't know how you reset the time. Maybe unplug it, plug it back in, and it just continues. Actually, one thing I should do is just take off the protection. I think I have it figured out. Four quick presses just resets the time. That's not four presses. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four. But as you can see, the watt hours and the milliamp hours are still continuing to climb. But five quick presses, that resets everything. There we go. So my plan is to leave this on for a while and keep coming back to check whether it's not getting too hot and then see if we can get any charge out of this again.